Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering questions from this paper, the October 2023 International A-Level Edexcel Pure Mathematics P4 exam. And this um, paper, I'm going to go through um, each question individually such that I can save the questions according to topic as well as um, I can save them in playlists according to this particular paper as well. And um, I'm going to go through the questions in some detail in some cases in order to address issues that I have in my mind from students who have asked certain questions. So, you know, I'm not just going to read through the mark scheme. I'm going to maybe sometimes go through some of the uh, concepts in a, um, you know, comprehensive way for certain questions. And um, so you'll have to bear with me, those of you who just want to see the you know, just the answers. I'm going to use this as a teaching tool. That's my main purpose of making these videos to help my students learn and to go over things maybe in more detail than we had time to during the course in school. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with question number one. And question number one, we have here a question which involves binomial expansion. So it says find the first four terms. Okay, so always make sure that you are careful about you know reading the question so you know exactly how far to go in ascending powers of x in ascending powers of x so we have to go starting from the lowest power of x towards the highest in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of this 8 over 2 minus 5x to the power of 2 writing each term in its simplest form so the first thing we need to do is we need to rewrite this in such a way that we can use the formula for binomial expansion for this. So I'm going to write this as 8 times 2 minus 5x to the power of negative 2. So we see we have a negative index, a negative power. In P4, we do with negative and fractional powers. Okay, so that um, is an issue for us because we cannot use the NCR method. All right, we cannot just use the NCR method and use the you know, uh, coefficients of Pascal's triangle from our calculator. The calculator does not take uh, negative values for the NCR. So we have to use the formula, the binomial um, expansion formula, which is something um, in the formula sheet that we can have a look at. All right. And um, I'm, I'm not going to bring it here, but basically the formula sheet has this formula, which states the following. 1 plus x to the power of n equals 1 plus, then it has n times x plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus, and it continues on in this pattern, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed, and so on. It continues on like this. Okay, so that's how the binomial expansion formula looks like. Now, the important thing about the binomial expansion formula is that this must be a 1. Okay, at the moment, this is not a 1. That has to be a 1 for us to be able to use this formula. If it's not a 1, this formula will not work. So we have to make this become a 1. So we're going to do a bit of uh, our algebraic manipulation to make it a 1. So we have 8 times 2 minus 5x to the power of negative 2. So I'm going to do this. I'll have 8 times... I'll put a square bracket. I'm going to take out this 2, okay, from this bracket here, all right? So the, the reason I'm taking out the 2 is because I want this to be a 1 here. I want this to be a 1 over here, all right? That has to be a 1. So therefore, I have to take out a 2 from, from this 5. So that means it has to be 5 over 2. I have to divide the 5 by 2, okay? And that's an x in there. And then I'm going to close the bracket and close this main bracket and put to the power of negative 2. This 2, all of this is the same as what's inside this bracket. but And it's all raised to the power of negative 2. Not the 8, but everything inside here. If I was to expand this, I'll get 2 minus 5x. And all of that to the power of negative 2. Now what I can do is I can use the fact that I know that a times b to the power of n can be written as a to the power of n times b to the power of n. So I can write this as 8 times... Now, this 2 can be written to the power of negative 2, separately from the bracket 1 minus 5 over 2x to the power of negative 2. 
Okay, so that gives us now, if we simplify this, that's going to give us 8 times 2 squared. 8, sorry, over 2 squared. Okay, times 1 minus 5 over 2, uh, 5 over 2x, sorry. 5 over 2x to the power of negative 2. So that's 8 over 4, which is 2. So you have 2 times 1 minus 5 over 2x to the power of negative 2. So now I have this in a form that we can now apply this formula to. So this is going to equal 2 times, now we're going to use this formula, 1 plus nx. So n is the power, and x is not just x, it's whatever's in this position here once it's written in that form. So this is our x. Okay, this is our x. So it's 1 plus n, which is minus 2 times x, which is, and the, the, this includes the sign in front of it as well. Okay, so that's important. Okay, that's going to be minus 2 times minus 5 over 2x. Okay, so we're going in ascending powers of x. We start with the, the constant, the power of 1. We're going to carry on now to the second power, x squared. It says the first four terms. It's the first term, second term. Now we get the third term. So we have plus, and we're going to have n times n minus 1. So you have minus 2 times minus 3. That's n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2 times, and you're going to have minus 5 over 2x to the power of 2. And then finally, the last, the fourth term, 1, 2, 3, you have minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4. That's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial. Remember, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1. So 3 times 2 is fine. Times, and then you have minus 5 over 2x to the power of 3. And that's as far as we go. Okay, so now we can finish this off. Let's see if we've got enough space here to do it, finish off with this page. Okay, so now we're going to have um, the two outside. Let's simplify this. That's going to be one. That's going to be plus because minus times minus is plus. The twos will cancel out. You're left with 5x. Here you're going to have minus times minus times plus. It's going to be plus, so it's going to be positive. The 2 cancels with the 2. So I'm going to have 3 times. I've already dealt with the sign, so I don't have to worry about that minus 3. 3 times, but I'm going to write this as 25 over 4x squared before I simplify it. And here we have minus times minus times minus, which is negative, And minus something cubed is also negative. They give you positive, so this term will also be positive. 3 and 2s will cancel out. We're left with 4 times. We've got 5 um, cubed, which is 125. That's x cubed over 2 cubed, which is 8. Okay, so those are the 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Let's just uh, finish this off now. So let's, we have 1 plus 5x plus 75 over 4x squared. This cancels with this, leaving you with 2. And that's going to be plus 125 over 2x cubed plus, and that stops there. And then we can finally expand the 2. So we have 2 plus 10x plus 75 over 2x squared plus 125x cubed. And here we have our answer. This is the answer for this part A of this question. Okay, now we're going to move on to part B. So it says, find the range of values of x for which this expansion is valid. Now, basically, you take the part of the um, equation here, or the part of the, the binomial expansion, once we have rewritten in this form. So we have 2 times 1 minus 5 over 2x, okay, yeah, minus 5 over 2x, to the power of minus 2, right? Now, we're going to take this part over here, all right? This part over here. Why? We're going to look at this part over here because if you think about it, right, this expansion, if you were to expand this, okay, this expansion goes on forever because this will never, ever stop. You'll never end up with 
um, a zero in any of these places. Okay, um, like if we were to expand, for example, something with a positive power, right? You would have, for example, if this was to the power of three, you would have you start off with you know um, if you look at the formula, right? If this was three, n was three, you'd have one plus three x, and one plus three times two times x squared, then you'll have, um, you know, and that'll be three times two times one times x cubed. The next will be three times two times one times zero x to the power four over four factorial. So you'll end up eventually having a zero in one of these brackets, which will cause the expansion to stop. And it will stop at that place. And it will be a finite expansion, right? In this case here, when you have a negative power or a fractional power, there will never become a zero in any of these places. It's always going to become more and more negative. So you start from n equals minus 2, as we did. That's going to be minus 2, minus 2 times minus 3, minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4, and so on. You'll never get a zero, right? So it will continue on forever. So that's why it's very important when you have these, these type of expansions that the value of this thing that goes in the bracket here, second, the value of the thing that goes inside this bracket, it has to be something that's smaller than 1. Why? Because this thing is going to be raised to the power of 2, then raised to the power of 3, then raised to the power of 4, then raised to the power of 5, then raised to the power of 6. If the value of this thing is greater than 1, then the value of this expansion will continue getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger or diverge away from any particular value. But if the value of this thing is less than 1, the magnitude of this thing is less than 1, if you think about it, if you, if you square a half, it gives you a quarter. If you cube a half, it gives you an eighth. If you raise a half to the power of 10, it gives you 1 over 1,024. The, the higher power you raise it to, the smaller and smaller, the less significant its value becomes. So therefore, the ter if this value of minus 5 over 2x is something that's less than 1, eventually what you're adding won't make a difference to the value of the expansion. All right? So therefore, what we do is, now if you didn't understand any of that, there's still no problem. I'd like you to understand it. But what, you know, if, you, if they ever ask you this question here, you have to basically just say that the magnitude of this, okay, so we can just put it as 5 over 2x, has to be less than 1. Okay, if this is true, then it will be a valid expansion because the value of the terms as you go along will get so small, it won't, you know, um, make a difference. You know, the, 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 the subsequent terms won't make uh, you know much of a difference to the value of the expansion. So here we can then say, we can solve this, we can say 5 over 2 times the modulus of x is less than 1. So therefore we can say the modulus of x has to be less than 2 over 5. Just rearranging that. And if you want to, you can write it as minus 2 fifths x to 2 fifths. That's the range of value. You can write it like this, and you can write it like that. That means the same thing. It means that the magnitude of x must be between minus two-fifths and two-fifths. Okay, so that's how we deal with this question. It doesn't matter if there's a plus or minus here. You just take that, whatever's in here, once you've got as one here, once you've got it in the form that you had to prepare it for when you use the binomial expansion. Why? Because you have to take what goes in these brackets that get squared and cubed and raised to power four, whatever. That, whatever goes in there, must be, the modulus of that must be less than, one okay its magnitude must be less than one and then you have a valid expansion so that completes question number one from the october 2023 paper pp4 paper other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here um, other questions from the topic of binomial expansion from p4 can be found in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link that will appear in this section of the screen and you can watch the video up here which tells you how to find the index pdf forms where you can then um, you know find uh, my playlists easily to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon